Okay, so now events. If you know how to do events in the DOM, I guess it's good that you start here. But if you don't know yet how to do events, or at least you haven't done some tutorials on events uh, by using normal plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, I would strongly recommend you start there first because I think it's not a good idea to be very good at React and not be very good at the DOM, or to be, or to get trained in React without first training on the DOM because React is, it's still on top of the DOM. Like the DOM is what you really need to master. React is a library that was meant for, to make better the DOM for a second, but maybe in five years the DOM will be React already, like default. It will not be. You will not have to have a different library or anything. It's always a good idea to master the fundamentals first. You don't have to be like great at it, but just use it. Build a t the typical tic tac toe, the to do list with the DOM, and then come here and learn it here. Because I don't think it's a good idea to to be learning React without really understanding events first and how to use the the normal plain HTML on click and the and the on hover or any related event oriented programming. So that being said, I think it's uh, let's just start with the explanation here. It's pretty simple, by the way. It's in, in HTML and CSS, in both cases, I don't think it's that difficult. It sounds complicated from, from, from afar, because that's always in technology that when you don't know any something about it, you hear the words react, react, oh my god, that must be complicated. And then you dive into it, and it's actually super cool and fun, and you realize that it's not, it was not that complicated. It happens with every technology. It has happened to me like hundreds of times in my life. It happened with React as well when I didn't know about it. And so about events, it's it's very similar. It's if when you have you can just on click you can put a property on click anywhere. Like this. You put on click and then you can say who's gonna handle that click? Who, what function is gonna be called? You are not calling that function that you have to understand that you are not the one calling that function. That function is being called by the system. You are telling the system which function to call. If you were the one calling it, you would put parentheses here. And some people made that mistake. Some people put the parentheses there and they call it. So what is going to happen is that React is going to enter into an infinite loop because it's going to call the function too soon. And it's going to get like calling, calling, calling the function. So you want to avoid that. You want to remove these two parentheses. Please do not put the parentheses there. If you want to put them, like if you are going to die if you don't put them, then you can just put another couple of parentheses on the left side like this. So that, that means that you're passing a function that is this entire thing. And whoever calls that function, that's going to be the system. When that function is called, that function will call this function, the click handler. So if you do want to do it like that, that's okay. But if you want to put it on its own without having another arrow function prior to that one, just put it without the parentheses, okay? So if we, if you test that now, when I click on it, it will say I was clicked in the in the console. Let's open the console and you'll see that when I click on it, it says I was clicked. I was clicked. Another important thing to remember is that uh, e is the parameter that automatically the system passes to the function. Since the system is the one calling the function and not ourselves, the system will pass a parameter to it that it's the event information. If you want to learn more about the event information, just Google event information JS and it, it's not a React thing, it's a JavaScript thing. The event information that get, gets passed to every to every event handler event information on handler. Let me see if I can find it like this. JavaScript introduction to events. Somewhere it's going to tell you what information is being passed to the event. Like for example here, this on click is not receiving the event information here, but it, it can. It can receive the event. If you put there a variable, it will receive the event information on that variable. They probably do it um, later on the code. Let's see if we can find an example that it's accepting here, the E, you see? 
it doesn't have to be called e, okay? But sometimes inside an event handler function, you might see a parameter specified with the name, such as event, evt, or simply e, or whatever you want. It doesn't have to be any of that. Normally, you put something like that because it doesn't make any sense to put different names so that you get confused. The majority of the people use e. This is called the event object, and it's automatically passed to the event to provide extra features and information. So in those e, in that e, you can, for example, if it's a mouse event, you can get from there, inside of that E, you will get the, the co coordinates of the mouse from the top left. So, like, you will be, you will not be able to know exactly where the mouse was when it clicked. And a lot of more things. Uh, I think I have here that you can, if you want, if you go to content.breathcode and you look for events, I have here in event-driven programming a uh, very good lesson that has explanations of all the types of event information that you can receive. For example, if it's a click, this is the event information that you will receive. Look, all of that. What was target, the target ID, the type, it was an HTML body element. If it was a click, the position of the mouse, look, every time I click, you see different positions. If it's a hover event or a mouse move, look, the mouse move gets triggered every time I move the mouse, so it's being triggered all the time. And then the mouse out, look, mouse out. It's when I get out of any element, okay? It depends on where you attach the listener. If you attach the listener to this button, then it will be the mouse out, out of this button only, okay? Let's, let's try it. Let's say on mouse leave. Let's try it. Let's compile it. And let's open the console again. And look, mouse in, nothing happens, right? And then mouse out, there it is. When I move the mouse out of the button, I receive the event information with all this information. It's a lot of information. You don't have to use it at all. But if you want to use it, the relevant information is here. It's a target ID, the target type, the pattern type, type. And there's all these events. You have all these events just related to the mouse events. You have mouse events, you have frame events, you have forms, and you have keyboard events. And here's a little demo out on each of them. Like the keyboard, it's when you type the keyboard like this. You see? It gives you what key was typed. So if you have a, a short read about this, I think it will give you some understanding of events. But in this particular exercise, we're being asked to update the alert component to call it correctly and check. The current code has one component that prints blah, blah, blah. Update alert. Oh yeah, that's it. That's all we had to do. Like, I did it already. Let me see if it works. If it works. If it's working. Nope, it's not. Let me see why. Ah, oh. that's sad. Like it has to just say click. And I had the mouse leave, and it was supposed to be an on click. Yeah. Let's try again. What else? What else? Good on success. So this class doesn't have to be here, I guess. I'm gonna change the test because there's no need. Let's try again. Yeah, now it's passing. So I'm gonna change the test so that you can leave the, the class name there because it's okay to have it there. 